If your PS4 under load sounds like a jet taking off, it's probably time to open it up and clean it. You will likely be surprised by just how much quieter a deep cleaning can make your PS4, which is why I'm going to show you in this video exactly how to perform such a deep cleaning. Before we begin, I just want to go over the stuff that you're going to need to clean your PS4, because there's a good chance that you might need to go out and buy a thing or two, or I'll leave links down below for stuff when necessary. But whatever you're gonna have to buy, I promise all this stuff is relatively cheap and it'll definitely be worth the money when you see what a radical difference in sound cleaning your PS4 makes. Okay, so to start us off, here are the things that you will definitely need. Obviously, a PS4. In this video, I'm gonna be cleaning the base model PS4. So if you have either the Slim or the Pro, the process might be a little bit different. But if you have the base model, this is exactly the process that you're gonna to wanna to do. You also need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now chances are you already have one in your house, but I'll link one down below just in case you don't. Another thing you need is a T9 Torx security screwdriver. In the video, you're going to see me using this ratchet with a T9 bit, but I'll link the T9 Torx security screwdriver just since it doesn't require any additional tools to use it, unlike this ratchet and the bit. Now, those are the only things you absolutely need because there's many different methods of cleaning, obviously, but there's several other things that I highly recommend you use to get the best cleaning possible and to make it as quiet as possible once it's reassembled. So I strongly recommend having, first of all, a brush of some kind just to help brush away the dust, especially from the fan inside. Once we get to that point, you'll see a can of air such as this one. I'll also link this down below, but this will be excellent for getting any dust out of the hard to reach places of the PS4. Also, something that would definitely be very good to have is a solvent such as a 70% isopropyl alcohol. That would do just fine. And you also are gonna need something to actually pour the alcohol into, such as a cotton round or a napkin or anything like that just so you could spread the alcohol. Since what we're gonna use the alcohol or the other solvent for is for wiping off the probably hardened on thermal paste. If yours isn't hardened on, you need not have any solvent, but it probably will be if it's been years since you last opened up your PS4 or if you never did. You also are gonna want a tube of thermal paste to apply after you remove the dried hardened on paste. Finally, a good thing to have is a face mask. This is not for COVID actually in this case, but it's because when you're cleaning out the PS4, chances are there's gonna be a ton of dust and it could cause sneezing and other annoying symptoms that could be possibly avoided by wearing a mask. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to pick up your PS4 and see on the back here that there's four places where there are screws. One, two, three, four. You just wanna go ahead and remove all four of those screws. Yours might be covered with like a sticker that you're gonna to have to remove with some tweezers to just take it off, right? Or even just a knife to just put under there and lift it off because it's a bit of a sticker that's a bit hard to get off. But once you do that, you'll be voiding your warranty, just a warning but I doubt you care because you're probably already out of warranty by this point anyway, after having a PS4 for likely years. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those four screws. And in case you couldn't tell, these screws are to be removed with the T9 Torx security screwdriver, as most of the screws in the PS4 will be. Okay, so I've removed the four screws. Go ahead and remove this back cover. The bottom one should come off pretty easily. Now here it's time to do our first bit of cleaning, so just clean out this bottom tray here, which is obviously not a lot of dust compared to other parts of the system, but still doesn't hurt to clean it. You can clean using either a brush or a paper towel or anything like that. 
Well, it's hard to get every last bit out, and this part has much, much less dust than other parts, like I said, so I'd call this good enough. Now that we've removed the bottom cover, we have access to the fan, the power supply, and the optical drive. First thing, before going and cleaning the fan or anything, we're just going to go ahead and remove the power supply. So remove these two screws, these two, and this one. So just go ahead and remove those five. Okay, so I've removed all five screws, but before we remove the power supply here, there's one more thing that we're going to want to do, and that requires flipping over the console. Just take the small side here and just move it to the side, and it should just pop out like that. Okay, just real quick, you want to just wipe out this part again. Same thing as the bottom cover. After you finish brushing or using a napkin to clean this part, you can move on to the next step. For the next step, we're going to want to remove all these screws you see here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're all Torx, except for this one, which is a Phillips. And this one holds a hard drive. So you could also just slide out the hard drive at this point. There goes the hard drive. Okay, now that we've finished removing all of the screws and the hard drive as well, what you're going to want to do first is clean out the hard drive. Once again, make use of canned air, brush, and a napkin perhaps as you see fit to clean it off. To get a deep cleaning, I'm going to remove the hard drive from its bay and clean it off even more with the brush. Now that the hard drive's been cleaned, you can just put that aside and proceed to flip over the console again. Now you can go ahead and remove the power supply. It should just come out like this. The only thing is there's one cable still attached from the power supply to the motherboard, so you want to make sure to disconnect that before removing the power supply completely. Now we want to clean off the power supply, and this is where the canned air comes into the equation, because that way we don't actually have to open up the power supply, we can just blow the canned air through here. So, to clean off the power supply, blow the canned air, or use a napkin for the outside, and blow the canned air through here a lot, in the vents in the back especially. Okay, so I've finished doing a decent cleaning of the power supply, and you probably saw how much dust there was, and we're not even close to the part where there's really going to be a lot of dust. So you can just put the power supply aside for now. This would also be the part where we remove the disk drive if we were doing a full disassembly, but there's just no reason to do that since there's not going to be much dust around there to remove, so it's the one thing we're going to leave. But what you do have to do in this step is disconnect three things. The Wi-Fi antenna right here, just give that a tug and it'll come right off. The optical drive power connector right here, tug that out as well, and then finally the data ribbon cable for the optical drive. And to do that, you're gonna see a small silver rectangle here, and you just wanna gently press down on that while you pull out this band. And it'll just come out right like that. We're gonna to get to cleaning all this later, but for now you can just flip over the console again. Now's the part where you're going to have to pop off this part, which is a little bit trickier than the bottom part. What you're going to want to do is first pull around this edge of the console, and it should just pop like that. And then the other edge might be a bit trickier, but you just want to give it a good tug and it should pop right off like that as well. Now, first thing again, we're going to want to clean out all the dust in here. So go ahead and do that. Once you got it clean, you can just put it aside. And now, we want to go ahead and remove all these screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are all Torx security screws. Now that all those screws are gone, these two here, as you can see, are Phillips head screws. And what they're doing is applying pressure to the CPU. So they're a bit different screws, but just go ahead and remove them normally. Now this sort of plate-like thing, you can just go and wipe off the dust or blow it off with a canned air. Okay, now that that's clean, you can go ahead and remove the fan connector right here if you haven't done that already. And then remove this metal plate here. should just come right off now that all the screws are gone. And voila! Just want to give this a good cleaning now. See how much dust there is here. Just both sides of this metal you're going to want to clean using whatever methods you see fit.
Okay, now that's pretty much clean. And we still haven't gotten to the dustiest part of the console yet, believe it or not. But you can set this aside. Now you want to go ahead and remove the motherboard itself. And dust this off as well. For this part, you might want to stick primarily to canned air. Just so you're not putting any pressure on any of the important electrical components. But as long as you're careful, just clean this side however you want. We'll get to the other side in a minute. Okay, now once you got that side pretty clean, you can just go ahead and flip it over. You want to not put it on top of the PS4 just because you don't want to get dust on the side you just cleaned. So just put the rest of the system aside to clean off the, this side of the motherboard. Canned air does the job pretty well here. Now that the motherboard's fully cleaned, there's still one more thing we want to do, and we want to do it now. You're going to want to use your solvent to go ahead and remove the thermal paste that's dried onto here. If it's not dried on at all, it just comes off easily. You might not need a solvent. You could just wipe it off, but you can tell how dried this is. So that's why I'm going to use the solvent. And it's best to do this now so that it can dry while we're cleaning the rest of the system. So take your solvent soaked material and just rub off the thermal paste. Also try to dry off the dye as much as possible before leaving it to dry completely. You don't need to worry about the thermal paste residue around the dye, just because as long as on the dye is completely clean for a new application, it should be totally fine. And the stuff in the middle there is really, really gonna be hard to get off. So now you can put the motherboard aside and take out the rest of the PS4 that you put aside before. Now we're getting this super dusty part as you can see. So we're gonna to wanna to remove this metal plate next. What you're gonna do is remove screws one, two, three, and then the metal plate comes right off. So go ahead and do that. These are Phillips head screws. Now you can put the basically the frame of the PS4 aside just to get the dustiness out of here while we clean the metal part. You can go ahead and clean this side using the usual methods. Now once this side is clean, there's still one more thing you want to do, and that's remove the thermal paste residue on the metal side here itself. So once again, you want to use your solvent on some kind of material to go ahead and remove the thermal paste. Now even once you think you got all of it off, there might be this grayish tinge still on the metal like there is here, and that's totally fine. So don't worry about it. You won't be able to get all of the color completely gone, but the reapplication should still go totally fine. And we can move on to the next step. So what you want to do now, once the alcohol dries a little bit, or at least there isn't any actual liquid on here, you just flip it over. Now we're going to clean this side and the heat sink which is super important because you can just see how much dust is in there. So start by cleaning off the metal outside the heat sink. And now to clean the heat sink itself you're probably going to want to blow air through here with the canned air but since there's so much dust you might want to do it like over the garbage can or something like that. Now once you've gotten all of the dust off of both sides of these, or at least the majority of the dust, out of the heat sink especially, you want to make sure you got all that out with the can there. Once you're done with that, you can move on to the next step. And that involves cleaning the fan and the remainder of the chassis. So first we want to remove the fan by taking out these two screws, one and two, Phillips heads. Now you'll find the brush and can there useful for cleaning the fan. So go ahead and clean the fan first. Now with the fan also, it will prove about impossible to remove every last bit of the dust. So just by removing the vast majority of the dust, you can be all set. Put the fan aside now. Now here's the last step. You just wanna go ahead and remove all the dust from here on this side, and also remove all the dust on this side, which is obviously much less. Again, don't worry about removing the optical drive. Okay, so there's still some dust on there, but like I said, it's impossible to get it all. So that's about done. I'm gonna start reassembling it back together. First, put the fan back in. Then once you've screwed the fan in, put down the metal piece that has the heat sink on the bottom on top. Now, once you've screwed that in, we must, of course, apply the thermal paste. 
Now, normally, of course, you'd put the thermal paste on the die, but I'm going to do something really unorthodox here and put the thermal paste on the metal here and then put the motherboard on top. The reason being my thermal paste... MX4 from Arctic Cool is a bit runny, and I know if I put it and turn the motherboard upside down, it might just get messed up. So I'm going to put it here and put the motherboard on top, and I encourage you to do the same if you have a runny thermal paste, or even if you don't. Just going to spread it out a little bit. If your thermal paste came with a paddle like this one, you can do the same, just knowing where the die is going to be. I'm going to put it right where the die will be. Okay, so now once you've generously applied the thermal paste, making sure to cover the entirety of where the die will be, you can go ahead and place the motherboard in. Making sure that this connector here on the far side of the board makes it through that hole. And you also have to make sure that all these connectors get into the I.O. shield in the back. And once that's done, you can go ahead and put the other metal sheet on top of the motherboard. And now screw it down in all the screw holes that you see. Okay, so once you've put those screws in, you can go ahead and reapply this mounting mechanism for the pressure on the die. Make sure to screw these screws in tightly. Now you just want to slide in the hard drive, plug in the fan connector, and then you can flip over the PS4. Now first reconnect the Wi-Fi antenna. Just press it on and it reconnects. Here you can see the power connector for the optical drive. Plug that in too. And press down on the silver rectangle again and slide in the data ribbon cable for the optical drive as well. Now take the power supply and connect its connector to the one on the motherboard. Once that's in, you can go ahead and reseat the power supply. Now once you've screwed in the power supply, you can go ahead and put on the bottom cover. And the top cover. And the other top cover. And then just screw in the four screws in the back. And now we're done. The PS4 is dust free and back together. So there you guys have it. Now your PS4 is back together and clean as a whistle. So it should make much less noise. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.